Hey y'all, and welcome back to the character creation course. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to model the sword belt. Now, there are a couple of things that we should note before we get started. First, if you haven't been following along the course and you're just finding this video, you're gonna wanna do it slightly differently, and by that I mean create a circle, form it to the shape of the belt that you want, wrapping it around whatever entity you're trying to put a belt on, and then uh, basically all of the steps are the same, but you're going to start with a circle. For us, since we've been going through the course and we have our pants modeled, we're just going to take a face loop going around the top of the pants and turn that into our belt. And the second thing you need to do is make sure that you have your sword generally created. And if you are, uh, you know, making it for a character, then go ahead and put that sword in the correct placement because that'll help with the final step of our sword belt, which is this little wrap around area that we can see vaguely on our reference image in the back there. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna get started by selecting the pants and then hitting tab to go into edit mode. And since we already have some faces running around, we can hit alt and then left click select, or if you right click, it would be alt right click for you. And then we'll hit shift D to duplicate the escape key or right click to leave it in place. And then we'll hit P and separate that out by selection. So now we have an additional object over here in our outliner and we can go ahead and rename this belt so it's a little bit easier for us to see later on. So hit tab to go back to object mode, select the belt object from your outliner. We can actually go ahead and hide the shirt and the hands because we're not going to need them. And for the moment, we'll go ahead and hide the sword and scabbard. So let's focus on this belt here. With that selected, hit tab, we'll go into edit mode and we're gonna just make this a little bit more uniform because right now we can see the belt gets fatter towards the front and thinner towards the sides. So since that's not how belts really work, what we're gonna do is switch to edge select by hitting the two on the top of our keyboard or you can come up here and choose edge select and then hit alt and select that first edge. All right, so let's go ahead and make sure that our transform orientation is set to global. We don't have any proportional editing on uh, from when we made the pants or the sword. And let's go ahead and hit S, Z, zero which actually makes all of the vertices scale to zero, meaning they reach an equilibrium. So now they're the same level all the way around. And then we can just repeat that with the bottom. So Alt select that edge ring and then scale Z zero to go ahead and bring them all down to the same level. All right, and there we go. That's basically good. Uh, that's intersecting so we can pull this out just a bit and maybe do the same thing with this front face here. And then if we wanna look at the belt overall, there's this weird blocky section here. So we'll just push these edges in a little bit. So that way it's a little bit more curved. Now, the final thing we wanna do for this belt is select everything with A and then scale out just a tad because we're going to be adding a solidify modifier to it and we wanna make sure that everything is good. All right, so now we can apply the modifiers that came over from the pants and then set this thing up to actually start working on the belt and getting the design that matches our reference image. So to add our modifiers to our belt, we simply have to hit tab to go back to object mode and then come over here to the right to the wrench icon, which is our modifiers tab. Now we wanna go ahead and apply our mirror modifier because right now our mesh only exists on this right hand side. And as our reference image shows, we're going to need the sword belt to come down on the left. So we've got to apply that mirror modifier in order to get the geometry over on the left side. And then for now, we don't actually need a subdivision surface because belts are quite, shall we say, blocky overall. You know, if it's, even if it's a strip of leather in a game, you're probably not gonna recognize that it's got some beveled edges because the belts don't need to be that high poly. So we're actually gonna go ahead and get rid of that subdivision surface modifier and then add on a solidify modifier. And we will increase this thickness just a bit because the belt should be a bit thicker than uh, what you would normally expect. And I think probably something around 0 0.02 is gonna be just fine. Now we will leave that solidify modifier alone for now. We won't apply it and we'll do all of our modeling with it active, but not applied. So now that we've applied the correct modifiers, let's come down here and fix our shading. So over on the object data properties panel, which is this uh, little green upside down triangle 
there, we should click under the normals tab and then check the auto smoothing here. And the auto smooth will make sure that everything is smooth within 30 degrees. All right, so now let's go ahead and start working on the actual detail that's gonna hold our sword in place. All right, so to get the sword belt to look like it can actually hold up the sword, we have to add in a couple of leather straps. And so let's just draw that out real quick. So we'll probably have one coming down right along there, and then we can bring it down from here, something like that. So now that we've marked that out by using the annotate brush, which you can access from any of the tools in modeling by simply hitting D and then you know drawing your mouse, and if you want to erase that D and right click will erase them. So now we know where those straps should come down on and we're going to go ahead and grab the loop cut tool and increase our number of cuts up here to two. And the reason we're going to do that is because for our sword belt, we have a wrapped leather look that is going to uh, come around. So we can hit W and go back to select mode and then start making that wrapped leather look uh, come alive. So we'll extrude out kind of rotate that and just kind of vaguely follow this pattern here for the sword belt. Now that's too, way too far out. So we can do something like that and there we go. And then we'll do the same thing. So extrude down, kind of rotate, vaguely following should be fine. And then select both of those and hit F to fill. Now, one final thing I'm gonna do is scale all of these vertices to zero on the X axis, and that will kind of flatten out that face, which will make it a lot easier to go ahead and create the sword. So we can bring that back and just make sure that that is roughly the right size. It is not. So what we need to do is just scale that face up along the Y axis until we can see both sides. And there we go. We even just move it over a little bit on the Y as well. So this part of our sword belt is done, but we need to continue making it believable. So we will come back to this in a minute and uh, let's go ahead and make our belt buckle and our uh, belt that goes through. So it looks like it's actually connecting. Okay, so for our belt buckle, we need to do two things. The first is we need to select this edge right here in the center and hit V, which will then rip those two edges apart. So now we have the left side of our belt, which will then go through the belt buckle and the right side, which will actually attach to the belt buckle. We're gonna actually make both of those uh, just like normal and we can kind of take this right now, move this out a little bit, extrude over, extrude over and then uh, move it move it down and scale it down just a bit and then maybe add a single loop cut in there and there we go so now we have the front of the belt that's going to connect and then you know you can position this a little bit better and we're good so with that i'm going to go ahead and then hit Control numpad plus hide that and it's time to make our belt buckle but to do that, what I'm gonna have to do is apply the solidify modifier. So we need to return back to object mode and then hit apply on our solidify modifier. All right, and for our belt buckle, according to our reference image, which we can see in the back here, we do have somewhat of a squared belt buckle. I'm gonna make mine a little bit more blocky just because I like that look. But if you want to then, you know, maybe smooth it out with some beveling or whatever, you can do that on your own. Okay, so let's scale this down just a bit and add in a, an edge loop by hitting Control R and then coming over here. Now we wanna scale all of these to zero on the X axis and we can do that and then grab this face, scale on the X axis to zero and now it is going to be straight up and down. From here, let's go ahead and select the top and bottom faces of our belt loop and then hit the I key to inset just a bit. So now we can pull out the belt buckle directly from the belt. It's gonna look like the belt buckle is going through the leather. To do that, let's grab the extrude along normals tool and just pull this up. And we don't wanna go too far because the belt does need to like go through the belt buckle here, but we can take it to, I guess that's 0 0.02, so negative 0 0.02 according to my operator panel. And there we go. From there, I'm gonna go ahead and grab these faces and we'll just extrude in this direction. And they should be even, uh, but we can increase that 
distance. I think maybe right there should be good. And then what we wanna do is just grab the bottom edge here and the top edge here and hit F to fill in a face. The last step here is to grab all three of those faces that we now have in order and then hit E and extrude. And there we go. Now we have a pretty solid belt buckle and we can continue playing around with this, but we need to actually check the orientation of the faces because right now there's no face right in here, uh, which tells me that the others are probably backwards. So now we've added in a new face to compensate for the lack of faces. And let's come over to our overlays and turn on face orientation. Now face orientation shows you the outward direction of a face. And so having it blue is good because it means you're looking at the outside of the face where texture will be mapped to in a game engine. But if we see red on something that should be blue, we know that, hey, those things aren't uh, facing the right direction. So let's select everything with A and then hit shift N, which will then recalculate normals. Now we don't care about this red inside here because remember those pieces are hidden, but there we go. All right, and to finish up the belt, hit Alt H to bring back what was hidden. And then all we have to do is adjust the uh, belt buckle to look like it's going over the belt. So for that, we'll grab the bottom face, Control Numpad Plus, until we've selected most of those things. It looks like if we look at this from the top, let's rotate this on the global Z axis, move this out just a bit, and we could grab this edge kind of pull the belt up a little bit more. And this face, pull the belt buckle over, something like that. And now we've got a pretty decent belt buckle, but we can see that it's not perfect. And that's because our belt wasn't perfectly straight when we went to create the belt buckle. It's okay. So there we go. That is, I'm gonna say close enough. No one's really gonna notice when the belt buckle is not perfect. All right, and let's turn off this face orientation and see where we're at. Now we do have a little bit of the shading problem when it goes to smoothing. So let's go down to the angles and just increase the angle of our smoothing until those weird edges disappear. I'll just take this one though, because the other side went away and uh, Actually, let's grab this whole edge loop and then just move it and do the same thing on this other side. And now it's all going to look really, really smooth. All right, for the final piece for wrapping it around our scabbard, we can take a look at our reference image and notice that there's basically a single strip of leather wrapping around the scabbard near the top, which is where we have it. So we're just going to mimic that. So go ahead and hit tab, go back to edit mode. So let's go ahead and select that entire face loop because we need to adjust that entire section to match a little bit more uh, with the scabbard. So we can rotate it and uh, scale it down just a little bit, move it over a tad. And once we're pretty satisfied with that, I think I'm gonna be okay with that overall, but I do want to uh, bring this face loop down and then increase the size of the belt right down here because I think it got a little small. All right, and now that we've got that, we'll just select that outer face and extrude. Very, very simple. Uh, this is almost done, it's not quite done, but let's go ahead and add in a single loop cut here. All right, so now let's grab this face, change our transform orientation to normal, and then let's scale this down on its Y axis. And this will give the illusion that it is actually wrapped around the sword here. And you can kind of just keep playing with that. But once you're satisfied, you're good to go. All right, and that is a sword belt. So at this point, I think we're done. You can tweak it a little bit more. I'm probably gonna tweak it a little bit more just to get it to be perfectly wrapped or at least perfectly wrapped where I'm happy with it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the process. So that's it for this tutorial video. If you enjoyed it, let me know by smashing that like button or double smashing that dislike button and subscribing if you want more videos and tutorials like this going forward in the future. I'm Sir Pinkbeard. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video where I show you how to model boots.